Hi everybody, this is video number 29. This is Mendeleev and the Periodic Table. Alright, I hope you enjoy this video clip. The Periodic Table is instantly recognizable. It's not just in every chemistry lab worldwide. It's found on t-shirts, coffee mugs, and shower curtains. But the Periodic Table isn't just another trendy icon. It's a massive slab of human genius. Up there with the Taj Mahal, the Mona Lisa, and the ice cream sandwich. And the table's creator, Dmitry Mendeleev, is a bona fide science hall of famer. But why? What's so great about him and his table? Is it because he made a comprehensive list of the known elements? Nah, you don't earn a spot in Science Valhalla just for making a list. Besides, Mendeleev was far from the first person to do that. Is it because Mendeleev arranged elements with similar properties together? Not really. That had already been done, too. So what was Mendeleev's genius? Let's look at one of the first versions of the periodic table from around 1870. Here we see elements designated by their two-letter symbols arranged in a table. Check out the entry at the third column, fifth row. There's a dash there. From that unassuming placeholder springs the raw brilliance of Mendeleev. That dash is science. By putting that dash there, Dmitri was making a bold statement. He said, and I'm paraphrasing here, y'all haven't discovered this element yet. In the meantime, I'm going to give it a name. It's one step away from aluminum, so we'll call it Eka Aluminum. Eka being Sanskrit for one. Nobody's found Eka Aluminum yet, so we don't know anything about it, right? Wrong. Based on where it's located, I can tell you all about it. First of all, an atom of Eka Aluminum has an atomic weight of 68, about 68 times heavier than a hydrogen atom. When Eka Aluminum is isolated, you'll see it's a solid metal at room temperature. It's shiny, it conducts heat really well, it can be flattened into a sheet, stretched into a wire, but its melting point is low, like freakishly low. Oh, and a cubic centimeter of it will weigh 6 grams. Mendeleev could predict all of these things simply from where the blank spot was and his understanding of how the elements surrounding it behaved. A few years after this prediction, a French guy named Paul Emile Lecoq de bois baudrin discovered a new element in ore samples and named it gallium after Gaul, the historical name for France. Gallium is one step away from aluminum on the periodic table. It's Eka aluminum. So were Mendeleev's predictions right? Gallium's atomic weight is 69.72. A cubic centimeter of it weighs 5.9 grams. It's a solid metal at room temperature, but it melts at a paltry 30 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It melts in your mouth and in your hand. Not only did Mendeleev completely nail gallium, he predicted other elements that were unknown at the time. Scandium, germanium, rhenium. The element he called echomanganese is now called technetium. Technetium is so rare it couldn't be isolated until it was synthesized. In a cyclotron in 1937, almost 70 years after Dmitri predicted its existence, 30 years after he died, Dmitri died without a Nobel Prize in 1907, but he wound up receiving a much more exclusive honor. In 1955, scientists at UC Berkeley successfully created 17 atoms of a previously undiscovered element. This element filled an empty spot in the periodic table at number 101 and was officially named Mendelevium in 1963. There have been well over 800 Nobel Prize winners but only 15 scientists have an element named after them. So the next time you stare at a periodic table, whether it's on the wall of a university classroom or on a $5 coffee mug, Dmitry Mendeleev, the architect of the periodic table, will be staring back. So who was Mendeleev? Actually, if you kind of look at his picture, I think he looks like a cross between like uh, Hagrid from Harry Potter and Santa Claus, I think. Um, but what he was is he was a Russian chemist, and back in 1869, uh, he actually uh, needed a way to organize the elements. Uh, what he did is he actually used a similar game like Solitaire, and he started playing around with the elements and organizing them according to their uh, common phys physical or chemical properties. Now, you got to remember, this is 18. 69. So Mendeleev is a member of my very important Old Dead Dudes Club, uh, but you got to remember that it wasn't until 1909 that Rutherford and Dalton did their very um, famous uh, gold foil experiments and things like that, 
and actually found out that atoms were made up of protons and neutrons and electrons. So back in Mendeleev's time, all he knew is that there was a nucleus um, in an atom. So that's all he could use uh, for information to arrange it. Um, so he arranged them by mass, by everybody that's in the nucleus. Remember my two housemates, protons and neutrons. Again, he arranged them according to atomic mass, right? So everybody in the nucleus and very common uh, physical and chemical properties. However, when he started putting these together, he only had 63 elements that were known in 1869. Now, if you check in any periodic table, you're going to find there's an awful lot more than that. So he actually left spaces or gaps in his periodic table that we have filled in over time more and more that we have found elements. They have fit right in based on their properties and based on their atomic uh, mass number as well. Uh, so what you're looking at here is a modern periodic table. Uh, this is the one, I think this one has 111. You can always tell how old the periodic table is based on uh, how many elements that it actually has. All right, summary time. Time. So who was Mendeleev or um, what was his greatest contribution and what made him so unique among other scientists? And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in class.